Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. It's Wednesday, February the 24th, 2021. Glad you could join me today. Um, we're continuing our exploration into the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we've come to parable in Matthew chapter 13, 24 to 30, the parable of the weeds. So let's get into it this morning and uh, reading from the New International Version. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed into his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weed also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed into your field? Where then did the weeds come from? Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. So let's both, let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles and to be burned, and then gather the weed and bring it into my barn. So, a few verses later, the disciples are really curious about what Jesus is talking about. So, he says in verse 36, starting in verse 36, Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And the good seeds stand for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So, we see from the very beginning that God purposed to create humanity. The world is his and everything in it. Out of his eternal realm and his infinite wisdom, God made a creative plan and set the world and everything that is in motion. But before creating everything, God wanted the people who would be planted here on the earth to have their own free will because he chose to love them as his children and he wanted them to love him in return. God, however, in his sovereignty, foreknow, foreknows all things. So he foreknew each of those that he created who would submit to him and would accept his salvation through Jesus Christ and who would not. Out of the gazillions of choices of possible outcomes in the universe, God chose this particular universe that we are all in, planted in right now. And he foreknew the results at the end, when he, before he even created it. To those who thought not the knowledge of God worthwhile to retain, the Lord gave them over to a reprobate mind to do what ought not to be done that it might be in accordance with what we read in Romans chapter 1. So many people have pushed away from the table of Christ and have embraced evil. The world is a field. God created humanity fully knowing who would be his children in the end. Although he predestined the universe and that he knew who would be those children, he did not predestine people for hell. They've given themselves over to sin and have so allied themselves with the father of lies, the devil. Second Peter 3, 9 and 10 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness to be. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed with a fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. You see, God created a choice for people and permitted Satan to live as the enemy, to be a catalyst, to give the people a choice to whether they would come to him 
and serve him and love him, or reject him and turn away from the truth. Those who are planted in the field of this world as weeds in this parable are under the influence of the evil one. They have chosen to reject the Lord and have loved evil instead of the truth. They have chosen to exchange the truth of God for lies told by the devil and his angels. Because of their choices, many of these people, all of those that haven't submitted to God, have been hardened into a state of rebellion. They have come to the point where they do not want God, and because of their rebellion, God has given them over to the lie. In fact, because of their choices, they have become slaves of the devil and have been further blinded by him. As it is written, 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4 says this, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. The parable of the weeds is an explanation. Jesus explains to his disciples that the field of the world God has planted. God planted grain in the field. He planted people in the field that would mature and be a harvest of righteousness for him. He planned it from the beginning. That's the whole reason why he planted the world. The, the people's hearts who are weedy and unwilling to submit to God, so uh, they've been planted in the world as weeds. And the devil has planted lies in their minds, and they are the children of lies. They refuse to submit to God, and they've been hardened against God, just as the devil and his angels are hardened against God. He's a deceiver. He's the father of all lies. Now, God has sown good grain with truth into the world. And the devil has sown weeds with lies into the world. The Lord is very patient and waits for the fields to come to their full ripeness before harvest. The world and all its people continue about their business. The children of the devil and the children of God, side by side, intermingled in this world. Many of us wonder when God will bring all of the things that we see around us to a conclusion and sort everything out. Well, the Lord is not slow in keeping His promises, as some understand slowness, but His patience allows for the fields to be ripened to maximize His grain harvest. For the fields to be ripened, to the point where the maximum amount of people will come to salvation in Him. The prophetic signs that the harvest is almost ready appear just as a grain field nearing its harvest appears to be close to the time when it needs to be harvested. We're in the spring, and we're in, we see the spring, and then we see the summer, and then we see the harvest. Through the prophetic signs, we see our world appears to be in the later stages of the growth of this field. At just the right time, the Father God will give the order and the end of the age and the earth will be harvested. The end of the age will come and the earth will be harvested. The angels will assist God in separating the wheats, wheat from the weeds. In other illustrations, we're given this illustration of sheep and goats. He'll separate the two. Those who have not come to salvation in Christ but have had wicked, weedy hearts, Jesus tells us here that they will be cast into the lake of fire where there will be no relief. This is a very sober warning for the people that are listening to this message today. If you've listened to the message of Christ and you are contemplating on coming to Him, I appeal to you, be reconciled to Him today because the penalty of sin is death eternal death. And the second death to come is a place of eternal torment. If you're listening to this message today, please consider what I am saying. Be reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Cry out to Him for mercy, to forgive your sins, and to cleanse your hearts. It's not too late for you. But one day, God will bring an end to things, and you will stand before the throne of God. And Jesus makes it clear that hell is very real. 
He offers you a plan of salvation today if you will only believe. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. If you will humble your pride and come to him and bow before him and cast yourself upon his mercy, he will give you his mercy and his grace will cleanse your sin and he will plant you anew. You will be a a grain in his field, not a weed. You will be born again in the Spirit. Then when the end comes and you stand before the throne of God, if you have come to Christ and have been born in the Spirit and have been born again and washed from your sin, you will be like the wheat harvest that God has prepared from the time eternal in the past for such time as is to come when he will separate the wheat from the weeds, the sheep from the goats. And you, if you know the Lord, if you've come to know him, will receive a rich welcome into the eternal paradise of God that God has prepared from the beginning for those that love him and are saved. The children of God will be gathered into the storehouse of God and we will receive the righteous reward of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and his marvelous grace. This is what God has designed in the beginning and what he planted the world for. His desire is to cultivate this world and bring forth a mighty harvest of grain of great value to him to gather into his storehouse. For those of us who have been forgiven and cleansed, (laughs) we have a hope that this world cannot give and this world cannot take away. In 1 Corinthians 2, 8-10, we are told, None of the rulers of this age understood it, for they said, If they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Rather, it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no, no heart has imagined what God has prepared for those that love Him. But God has revealed it to us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. My friends, this is the truth. All of us who have been born of God will one day shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Father. This is our hope and this is our future. And this is food for thought.